Good afternoon and welcome. We'll give a few moments just to allow others to join today's webinar. Thank you. Good afternoon for those of you who are just joining us. Thank you. We're just given a couple of moments to allow everyone to join, join today's webinar before we get started. Thank you. Okay, all right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you all for joining today's Red Purple Modernization DBE and Workforce Outreach event. My name is Jamie Neely. I am the manager of the Small Business Development and Outreach Team here at CTA. I am joined by the Director of Diversity, Juan Pablo Pareto, as well as my colleague, Laura DeCastro. Laura, before we dive in, can I ask you to share a couple of words, please? Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the event. And we are looking forward to not only uh, sharing this time with Jamie and the DBE group here at the CTA, but also with Walsh Floor and to just inform you all about our workforce initiatives at the CTA. Thank you, Laura. And together, we say welcome. As many of you are most familiar with CTA's diversity programs and our outreach events, we would typically be in person, rounded and shuffling through a room, passing out business cards. And while times have temporarily changed, CTA diversity programs have quickly adapted and continue to connect our small businesses and individuals in the trades to our CTA opportunities. I won't take too much time here as we have a packed agenda over the next hour, which will flow a little as such. Do note today's presentation includes both DBE small business opportunities as well as workforce individuals in the trades and the first half will include all DBE information, the latter, the workforce and workforce partners. I'll begin by speaking briefly about CTA diversity programs and then we'll have our, our prime partners, Walsh Floor, talk about the RPM project and the DBE opportunities we will then take all DBE questions at that time via the chat box or Q&A box. We'll then go into the workforce portion of the presentation, which includes CTA's workforce initiatives. Again, our prime partners, Walsh Floor, RPM workforce opportunities, and our workforce partners to highlight programs, resources to support a more diverse workforce. We'll take all workforce questions and any missed DBE questions at that time and we'll conclude with closing remarks. I imagine today's presentation will spill over a little in time and I understand if you have to drop off, we will follow up with today's uh, presentation to all of the attendees. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Please continue to mute your audio unless called on. Questions will be addressed again at the break of the DBE presentation and again after the workforce presentations. We encourage you to follow up with all the appropriate contacts provided throughout the presentations. And a really quick ask to better know who's in the room with us today and how we can better support you. We're gonna release a one question survey poll that simply asks if you're here attending as a DBE, interested in DBE opportunities, or uh, individual in the trade interested in workforce opportunities. Chanel, if you can release the poll for me.
Awesome, thank you, Chanel. We'll give 30 seconds or so. If you all can do a quick click of a button, answer that for me. I see those answers coming in. Awesome, just a few more seconds. Perfect. Thank you all for completing that. And for my panel team, I will say that 93% of our audience here is DBE contract specific, while 7% is with workforce. As a heads up, as we continue our presentations. Now, to get started, CTA diversity programs. A little bit about us, we are here to create more diverse opportunities and to increase diverse participation across all of CTA, CTA contract opportunities. We have three primary customers, if you will. Our internal user groups, where we advocate when and where there may be DBE opportunities. Our prime contractors, such as Walsh Floor, to assist them with connecting with established and diverse small businesses to do business with. And as importantly, providing the support to our small businesses to make sure that you all are procurement ready and ready to navigate through CTA contracting. Our certification and goal setting allow us to consider and assess individual contracts to determine the appropriate DBE goals that should be attached. We do recognize that the DBE, we do recognize the disadvantaged business enterprise DBE certification and not the M or W that most are familiar with. Our unique workforce initiatives and goal setting creates a more comprehensive and diverse work environment by allowing second chance individuals and others who may not have been afforded such opportunities to have, our, to have opportunities. Our mentor protege program allows the merge of a seasoned business professional to lend the experience contacts and processes to a scaling protege. This partnership is valuable in helping small businesses secure and build more prime and past performance, as well as our technical assistance support. CTA contracting strategies, how do you find out about our opportunities? Marketing to the prime, how do you get ready to uh, pitch your business to our prime contractors? Access to capital, we are very familiar with the barriers and challenges of our small businesses and one of them, the biggest, is capital. Walsh Floor and RPM, through our RPM project, has been diligent in facing this, it, this hurdle for our small businesses, such that they've created a program named Building Small Businesses, which I'm sure they may talk about a little later, but this capital sourcing program supports our small businesses in securing funding. Um, in a short length of time, a little less than two years, we've already helped almost 15 firms secure nearly $5 million in funding during a global pandemic. So that's a lot to be proud of. And then of course, our educational programming, being procurement ready, making sure that our small businesses understand what's expected of them to best perform and bid on our contracts. Where to get started? Make sure you're registered as a CTA vendor on our website. Here is where we use this database to find you. Our primes are looking for you. And we push out a lot of our e-blasts with procurement and educational trainings through our database. Consider obtaining the DBE certification if you are not yet DBE certified. Again, we do not accept the minority or women business enterprise certification, rather just the DBE. Review our current solicitations uh, via our Bonfire Fire platform as well as getting in front of the opportunities using our buying plan also on our website. How to connect with CTA and our diversity programs via our outreach events, much like this. Our pre-bid meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, the more we get to know you, the more we can become advocates for you and assist you with connecting with our internal user groups as well as our primes. Our DBE Advisory Committee. We just voted our 2021 DBE Advisory Committee. So we're gonna roll out who they are and uh, you can use them as additional advocates um, on your behalf as DBEs. Our technical assistance agencies, um, we don't try to reinvent the wheel. We leverage their partnerships and their programming also to better support you all in navigating our opportunities 
And you can also find us on our social media platforms, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, as well as our new launching YouTube channel that I hold all, house all of our videos, both educational and procurement. Who to contact with CTA? We have our director, Juan Pablo Ferretto, as well as small business development and outreach, certification programs, compliance, and my colleague, Laura DeCastro, our senior project manager. Now, for why you all are here, I invite our prime partners, Walsh Floor, to discuss the RPM project and DBE opportunities. Kwaku Thompson, if you would unmute yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Kwaku Thompson, and on behalf of the Walsh Floor Design Build team, I want to extend everyone a happy holidays. Um, as the uh, diversity and inclusion manager for this project, I want to thank all of you uh, for taking the time today to attend today's event. As Jamie and Laura already mentioned, um, in, a, in a few minutes, you will be hearing extensively about upcoming bidding opportunities, uh, not only for Walsh Floor, but also for uh, prime subcontractors such as Mead. Um, but we'll also be learning about Walsh Floor's approach to workforce engagement. So while this event is being recorded, I also want to let you know that this is merely an introduction and an invitation to continue to engage Walsh Floor's diversity team, our project staff, such as Bryce and, and Leah, who are on today's uh, event, as well as CTA's workforce partners, which is why I can't stress enough that we will have regular updates on our project website about upcoming bidding opportunities, announcements about special programming, uh, like our Building Small Business Program, which is dedicated to connecting companies to loan opportunities, as well as hiring opportunities that are facilitated by the Walsh Floor Diversity Team uh, and CTA's workforce partners, Hire360 and Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. We realize that this project undoubtedly won't be successful unless we partner with interested companies such as uh, all of you that are attending today's event, which is why communication is integral and why we encourage all of you to follow up with us early and often. So as these slides indicate here, uh, the wash floor team is comprised of walls construction and, and floor, um, but we as a joint venture of the wash floor design build team were uh, awarded the $2.1 billion um, R RPM phase one project, which is the largest capital improvement project in CTA's history. The unique thing about this delivery method is that it's a design build, which allows us to simultaneously design this product while commencing construction. And the four primary project areas for this project is the pre-stage work, which is pr primarily uh, wrapping up right now, but that work entailed uh, track realignment and then also the construction of our temporary stations. Uh, and then we are currently in the midst of erecting steel for the red purple bypass flyover, which is ultimately intended to uh, reduce traffic congestion at the Belmont station for the red, purple, and brown lines uh, commuting through that area. And then there's the reconstruction of four stations um, between the Lawrence and Bryn Mawr cor corridor of the red line, uh, just north of the Belmont station. And then last but not least is the corridor signal improvements, which is basically the upgrade of a century old uh, electrical system being done by Mead and its subcontractors. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Bryce Bernardi to delve deeply into uh, some of where we are with construction currently and some of the upcoming bidding opportunities. Thanks, Jamie. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Kwaku. Um, <clears throat> some brief update on the RP, on the pre-stage construction. Um, as part of this pre-stage work, as Quaker said, we implemented two interlockings, one at Montrose, one at Thorndale. Uh, these two interlockings were consisted of installation of new track uh, material, as well as uh, new power, traction power implementation and signal equipment. Uh, at RPB, uh, as Quaker stated, there's a flyover, flyover steel erection was occurring. Uh, this started with drilled shafts, as you can see, uh, built, dug 70 feet into the ground and then concrete poured into them. And then we had columns and caps built on top of that. And then as we see here, uh, steel 
erection is uh, beginning, is going on currently, and then followed up by uh, the concrete deck, which is it's beginning right currently as well. Um, just type of typical work that's happening on site involves operators, laborers, carpenters, iron workers, and uh, masons. Uh, for RPB, some upcoming opportunities, including uh, a lot of reinforcing, reinforcing steel work. Uh, drilled shafts will be taking place for the NM structure in quarter two. Uh, that involves obviously building structural steel as we're drilling caissons into the ground. Uh, ridge bearing, uh, plinth construction, uh, this is occurring in quarter one of 2021. Uh, the track is built on top of concrete plinths, which has reinforced steel in, into it. Uh, it's probably around about 10,000 tons of steel for the flyover. Uh, and then this will also be occurring for the NM track as well. So this will uh, be coming out to be later, uh, probably more quarter four, 2021. And then reinforcing steel for any substructure concrete. So kind of what we saw in the, for the flyover, we'll be doing it all over again for the NM structure at RPB. And then just as needed services, we have rodent control, site security, and then third party QA, QC. Uh, QA, QC is primarily on this project is done by, is required to be done by a third party. We can go to the next slide. Uh, and we have upcoming or uh, overview of what's going on at LBMM. Um, <clears throat> as you can see in this, in these pictures, uh, the existing track structure is pretty old and outdated, uh, all retaining walls and then uh, cast in place bridges over uh, existing roads. Uh, what we'll be coming through and building is all precast segmental uh, ridges, which uh, will require us to once again, be drilling shafts for demo, after demoing the track, uh, building concrete columns and caps, and then erecting the precast structure on top of these, these piers that have been built and then building the train on top of this as well. So a lot of operators, laborers, carpenters, as well as uh, some iron workers are working on, on the upcoming work at uh, LBMM. Um, so just some specific bidding opportunities that are coming up at LBMM. Uh, <clears throat> we have a lot, pretty similar, some similar scope to what we saw at RPB, uh, reinforcing steel for drilled shafts, um, as well as bridge, uh, as well as infill walls and uh, retaining wall work. Uh, and also plinth construction, uh, similar scope to what was going on at RPB. Uh, the plinth construction is built on top of the, the existing deck, uh, which requires reinforcing steel and then concrete. Um, then just some, as we come through, we're gonna be demoing a lot of work in the alleys. Uh, we'll have to restore these alleys to the existing condition. So there'll be some asphalt work in the alley as well as uh, rebuilding the retaining walls, which is will be uh, your, your concrete work. And then uh, <clears throat> structural steel material, there is a small section of cast in place bridge that'll be being erected at the edge, at the north end of LBMM. That will be uh, late quarter three, 2021. Well, that will, it's expected to go out to bid, but that's around 200 feet of cast in place bridge. Uh, and then to support all of these uh, major operations, ongoing QAQC, uh, saw cutting and coring will be also up to uh, bid as well as uh, other opportunities will be bid as, as, see, as they are uh, saw to be needed to support these major operations. Um, so that covers all the bidding opportunities. Uh, I'm gonna hand it for the LBMM structures and RPB. I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Leah George from the stations team. Hey everyone, my name is Leah George. I'm a project engineer on the stations team, like Greg said. So the LBMM stations portion of this project includes the renovation of four stations on the red line, like Quaku mentioned. It includes Lawrence, Argyle, Berwyn, and Bryn Mawr. Um, all of these should be starting, construction should be starting around 2023. 
So this includes the station buildings themselves that you enter and exit in along with the canopy structures on the platform, as you can see in those pictures. Um, and within the stations team, we also had some smaller scopes that you could potentially bid into as well that include substation modifications or um, CTA relay house structures. And that's all part of um, our team as well. So upcoming bidding opportunities, there is a lot for our side of the project, um, especially within 2021. Um, specifically, we've, we've covered basically all scopes of work, but a few to mention HVAC in quarter one of 2021. Um, the design for the permanent stations, obviously we'll need all new HVAC systems for all four stations. The design will most likely be ductless split system. We're still in the design phase and since it's still a design build project. Um, so it'll probably be a ductless split system AC unit with wall and unit heaters, all part of the scope as well. For each station, we'll need new systems for the kiosks, communication rooms, elevator escalator, control rooms, and back of house support spaces. So um, there's quite a few units in each station. And then there's, of course, four stations. So we'd like to bid it, bid it out as with all four stations for one company, but we're also open to splitting up the bid as well for maybe one person, one company can do each station. Um, other opportunities in quarter two and three of 2021 include painting and coating. Um, all four stations will have interior painting enhancements, painted interior columns and exposed concrete columns along with painted signage supports. So as I mentioned earlier, this could apply to all four stations, but then we also have smaller scopes as well, such as the stage B temporary stations that will need some painting um, as well as miscellaneous stuff like the substation or anything like that. And this scope could also include sealants and caulking. So we'll all we'll obviously need um, need all of that supply to us. And then another thing we could talk about is the structural steel opportunities. There's a lot of them on this job um, for both the permanent stations and then as well as the um, the relay houses as well. But at the permanent stations, we would need structural steel for the station houses and the platform canopy. We could bid this out as a package of furnish and install, but we're definitely open to the partnership of one person furnishing and another installing to split the scope out. And as you can see, there's a lot of bidding opportunities throughout all four quarters of 2021 for structural steel. Um, and of course, as Bryce mentioned, we also have those as needed services for um, demolition, rodent control, trucking, stuff like that. So there's also, as since it's a large project, we also have first tier subcontractors who are looking for additional support for their scope. So Mead Electric is a great example. There are electricians on this job. Um, and here are a few of the scopes that they are looking for participation in. So if you are interested, feel free to contact the diversity inclusion team to learn more or to be connected with Mead. Um, but the vendor solicitation process, in the red box, you'll see the overall goals that we have for this project. Um, super great to keep in mind when bidding the work, and they also include the workforce goals that are listed there, such as apprentice or zip code participation. Um, it's also good to keep that considered when pricing out the work. So each bidder needs to complete the pre-qualification process which you can see on there. You can see it in our website or you can um, email RPM Diversity for any questions you may have. CTA also has the opportunity to get DB certified through them. So um, that's a really great opportunity as well. So again, feel free to visit the website or reach out to the diversity inclusion team to learn more. And then this is an example of what you would see for an invitation to pre-qualify. So this is a notification that a scope will come out soon to the market. And we just wanna make sure everyone has time to complete the pre-qualification questionnaire and the Buy America certificate, which are highlighted in the um, slide there. So we'll give you all the documents you need. Um, and we're just hoping that this gives you enough time to be pre-qualified for when the bid does actually go out. And then this is what you would see when um, an invitation is actually sent to bid. So this is a notification that the bids are actually being requested and accepted at that time. 
Keep in mind, a responsive bidder must submit the pre-qualification that we saw on the last slide and the Biomerica certification for their bid to be considered. Um, we also talk, look at CSIP, that's scope dependent. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> and so I think that's it for procurement. Does anyone have any questions for any of us? Thank you, Leah. For any DBE specific or small business specific questions, please feel free to use the Q&A chat box. Okay, um, so far we have, it says, can you please identify what the QA, QC requirements are? I'm interested in bidding. So the QA, QC requirements are a uh, third party uh, scope that covers uh, pretty much all, all of the uh, project, um, including concrete testing, uh, soil, uh, compaction testing, and then also uh, steel inspection, as well as welding. Okay, thank you. The next question is, HACI is currently providing pre-apprenticeship training in electrical, carpentry, and labor. Would there be opportunities for these individuals to enter the apprenticeship program and assist in fulfilling the 15% requirements? That's a, that's a great question. I think we're going to uh, kind of delve into our workforce approach uh, during the next segment of this presentation. And um, I think there, are, there is a potential for synergies between us, our workforce partners, um, IR360 and Chicago Cook. So um, certainly open to, to discussing more, but I think we're gonna unpack that, uh, you know, our process to date a little further in this presentation. Okay. Thank you. And then we have one more. What are some of the design services that are available to be it? So, so design is essentially wrapping up the, the significant part of it. We, we do have um, engineering services during construction, um, which similar to what we kind of say, stated on our bidding opportunity slides, it's on an as need basis. Um, you know, Stantec again will be uh, leading those efforts. And to date, you know, Stantec has utilized uh, 20 sub consultants, give or take. 75% of which have been uh, DBE subconsultants. So again, um, we, the, the Walsh Floor Diversity Team can certainly put uh, individuals in contact with Stantec and Stantec's uh, diversity lead, uh, Carla Hardis, um, as opportunities present themselves. Okay, um, next we have, um, this is, we have uh, cleaning services. Is she said I'm a cleaning service? Is there any opportunities for post construction cleaning? For I am a DBE, MBE, WBE non union. So, with post construction services, I think the best way to really answer this question is it depends if 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 this post clean uh, if post cleaning involves on site work you have to be union affiliated. If it's cleaning for say an office building, then you would not have to be union affiliated. I, I will say that uh, recently our project team moved from downtown up, uh, up closer to the project site and we have various offices uh, around the uh, Edgewater and Lakeview area, but we do actually have two um, cleaning services two DBE cleaning services signed up to perform that work. Um, but um, again, with post cleaning services, that's something that I think we'll certainly consider those options moving forward um, as we wrap up certain construction efforts. Um, but again, I think the distinction is that it's really contingent on where that work uh, is, is, uh, occurs. And if it does occur on site, you would have to be union affiliated. Thank you. So now let's take one last DBE question and then we'll move on to the workforce portion. Okay. And so one more. So we have, would there be any construction management opportunities for the professional DBE firms? Walsh Floor has a expansive uh, project management staff given the fact that we are also a joint venture. Um, so our operations staff um, it, it's pretty robust. Um, I, I do think that uh, there's always a way in which you could facilitate 
connecting opportunities and networking with subcontractors who may be in need of that. But Walsh for at the time being would not necessarily need you know construction management services. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Chanel. And thank you, Kwaku, for answering those questions. And keep the questions going, um, guys. Uh, continue to use the Q&A. We will address another uh, uh, we will address those questions again at the end of today's presentation. Uh, next is our second portion of our presentation, Workforce, CTA RPM Workforce. And I'll hand it over to my colleague, Sam Hunt, to talk about CTA's workforce initiatives. All right, thank you, Jamie. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you again for attending and happy holidays. Um, now we're gonna begin the portion of the workforce initiative side of things here with this presentation. Um, and I wanna start out by saying the CTA is committed to promoting an environment of inclusivity within all operations across the Chicagoland area. Uh, we're also committed to ensuring all contractors and the individuals they hire reflect the communities we serve. The CTA workforce initiatives team specifically furthers these commitments through CTA's contracting opportunities. Uh, our team does this in a variety of ways, including establishing workforce hiring goals uh, for disadvantaged populations on our contracts, direct advocacy and discourse with local unions uh, and contractors on our projects, and routine compliance inspections to ensure all contract goals are adhered to and exceeded. With the RPM project being the largest capital investment in CTA history, as Quake who mentioned earlier, the CTA and Walsh Ford team have developed a robust plan to recruit a diverse and skilled workforce to fulfill the various positions needed to bring this project to life. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Caitlin Ertz to speak more specifically about the workforce opportunities on RPM and the workforce partners that are supporting us in these efforts. Kate? Thanks, Sam. Hi, guys. I'm Kate Leonard. I work for Walsh Floor uh, for the diversity and inclusion team. You probably have seen me before. Um, welcome back. Nice to see you. Um, I just want to touch on briefly um, the workforce component of RPM, but I also want to kind of go back to and just remind you that these two ideas are very married. Workforce for our small business contractors are really important and what our team here is doing is trying to support you in making sure that you're successful on the, on the goals on this project. So while the majority of you are small businesses looking for contracting opportunities, we wanna remind you that um, we're here to support you and the communication like Kwaku mentioned earlier, early, often, as much as you want, call us, use our cell phones, our emails, just get in touch with us and let us know what you need and we can do our best to advocate for you. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, I just wanna briefly touch on if you're interested in getting on the project, as Kwaku mentioned, we are um, a, a union project here. So any contractor that's on our project um, falls under the PLA that um, CTA has. And so they have to be part of the union. So if you're not yet part of the union, if you have construction industry and you're kind of interested, here's a list of some of the major trades that are gonna be on the project. As you can see, all the way from this year, through the duration of the project, we're gonna have several different trades, laborers, carpenters, operators, iron workers. And what Juan um, mentioned prior from Hafia has their laborers and carpenters program. That's fantastic. We'd love to get in touch with those people and see if we can connect them with our workforce partners and make sure that everyone has the right opportunities here. And that includes getting connected with you as the small business contractor. Um, I wanna flip over right now to the next slide as well. So getting to be part of the union is not just a straight shot. You don't just show up somewhere and then you're, you're set and ready to go. There are a couple of steps that you need to take. Our team has tried to do a good job of putting that together all in one spot. I'm not gonna go over each of the specifics today with you here. However, I do wanna remind you that you're gonna get a PDF of this PowerPoint presentation. All this information will be in your hands. So you'll be able to look at all the different unions and see which one you're interested in most and then be able to take that information and go and inquire and and do some due diligence. At the same time, I want to highly recommend partnering with both Hire360 and the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership because both of them are equipped to help you get placed on the project and placed within a trade union themselves. So um, without any further ado, I would like to introduce our, our workforce partners. Um, really quickly, I'm just gonna touch on how our team all works together. If you could just go to the next slide as well. So CTA is the owner of the project. They own CTA RPM phase one. They have contracted with Walsh Floor and Walsh Floor has a subconsultant, Trinoc, who we use to help 
um, with all this um, moving parts, right? And so we all work with Hire360 and Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership as a team to ensure that everybody has equal opportunity and has a voice in what's going on here. So I'd like the partners and Hire360 to go a little bit deeper into what services they offer. And so Ashley, if you'd like to introduce yourself, that'd be great. Yeah, thanks so much, Kate. Um, and thanks to CTA Walsh for, uh, for hosting the conversation. Uh, we're excited to be here, share a little bit about Hire360 and how we can support y'all as candidates um, towards careers in the trades, particularly opportunities on this RPM project. Um, before we jump into that, I'm gonna share just a little bit about where we're coming from uh, to kind of set the stage. Um, so, sorry, go ahead and, and go to the next slide, that's fine. Um, so Hire360 does represent uh, the first time that developers, general contractors, and unions are all at the same table. Um, to address this issue that we've, we've heard a couple times now, challenges in the industry around um, inequality and sustainability within the construction industry. Um, so of course, these groups work together all the time for bid negotiations, but this is really the first time um, they've come together to jointly uh, connect the community to construction and increase access. Um, so if you could just go ahead briefly to the next slide, that would be great. Um, we, we reference our board here just to underscore the unique partnerships. Uh, I won't go through it piece by piece, but just want to point out kind of half from the labor side, half from the industry uh, side with major developers, contractors. Uh, on the labor side, we'll see the Chicago Federation of Labor um, for those that aren't quite engaged with the trades yet. The CFL is the uh, entity for both inside and outside the building trades, uh, so all kinds of unions. And then um, even a BA, even a business agent uh, representing the trades here. Some of you may recognize uh, Rishi Davis. He is a recent addition to our board. We're so lucky to have him. Uh, he has uh, started a nonprofit focused on youth development, and you may remember him as a wide receiver from the board. Um, so our four pillars of focus, um, we're going to be seeing an increase in an aging workforce, but also an increase in the need for reliable skilled workers. And that's where y'all come in. Um, Hire360 is one of the players. Um, if there was a reference to Hacia, so, so just one of them, but working with those other partners uh, to, to help prepare those skilled workers, particularly women, um, people of color, veterans, formerly justice involved individuals and youth. Uh, to get connected. And so we do this through four pillars, um, including youth engagement, business development, supply chain. But uh, for today's conversation, uh, we're just gonna focus on workforce development. So I'm actually gonna hand it over to my uh, wonderful colleague, Damian Flores, to talk more about this workforce development, um, because as, as has kind of been alluded through this conversation, um, he can talk through his role as a recruiter and a little bit more about uh, how our team can help prepare you as candidates for these opportunities. Damian? You asked me and thank you everybody for joining us today. I appreciate it. Uh, like as she said, my name is Damian Flores. I am one of the recruiters slash case managers here at Hire360. Uh, as a recruiter case manager, we are responsible to work one-on-one -on -one with all of our candidates and to help guide them through their journey into unionized construction. Uh, what I'll be doing is reviewing just the work side, workforce operations that we uh, have here at Hire360. So the thing that does make us different from other organizations and gives our candidates a competitive advantage is the programming that we provide to our candidates and the connections we have with the major players of the construction industry. Our apprenticeship programming is built to reflect the priorities of employers, so programming is multifaceted. One of the most important aspects of our programming focuses on the apprenticeship aptitude test. As some of you may already know, apprentices for most trades must take a test to enter the apprenticeship school. Our test prep sessions arm candidates with the skills and knowledge they'll need to prepare for this test. There are 12 hours of total content, which is broken into four sessions that focus on the different subjects of the test. The subjects are the test for math, reading comprehension, numerical reasoning. Damien? Yes. I'm sorry, it's a little bit of an echo. You sound a little muffled. Sorry. Uh, let me see if I take these headphones out. Oh yes. Can, you can hear me now. Yes. Perfect, thank you. 
Um, so I'm going to start just with our uh, test prep uh, programming. So one of the most important aspects of our programming focuses on the apprenticeship aptitude test. As some of you may already know, apprentices for most trades must take a test to enter the apprenticeship school. Our test prep sessions arm candidates with the skills and knowledge they'll need to prepare for this test. There are 12 hours of total content, which is broken into four sessions that focus on the different subjects of the test. Subjects on the test are math, reading, comprehension, numerical reasoning, paper folding, and mechanical reasoning. The curriculum that drives the test prep sessions is based on the GAN test, GAN test, which is the test that is used by a majority of unionized apprenticeship programs. Of course, Hire 360 is not just about test prep. Our curriculum also includes soft skill programming, which helps our candidates be successful once they're able to get onto construction job sites. We also assist all of our candidates with resume building and interview preparation. And for those still learning about the industry, the recruiters will help candidates navigate the different trades that are available so that candidates are making the most informed decisions. There are over 30 different trades available that have their own skill sets and we want to make sure candidates have some information about each trade so that they know whether that trade is a good fit for them. Uh, many of the candidates that we do work with are already uh, partners within a local union. For these individuals, we focus on building off what they already know. Experience levels range from a couple of years to decades of experience, so each case looks a little different. With these candidates, yes, uh, sorry. With these candidates, we will complete an assessment to see if we can address any of the barriers that may be holding them back from their next project. Our team works directly with contractors and subcontractors to find jobs that would be a good fit for individuals that we work with. Out of all these services that I have mentioned, they are free to all of our candidates. So, you know, no cost to them for our programming. There are costs, however, associated with entering into the construction industry. And that is where our barrier reduction fund comes into play. The barrier reduction fund supports candidates at every level from helping with application fees for the apprenticeship programs to helping to cover union back dues for those that are already cardholders and cannot cover dues while unemployed. As we mentioned, we do support candidates at every level of experience. Those for hey, ma'am, can you just uh, maybe get a little closer to your speaker? Uh, all right, so hopefully you can hear me clear. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we work with all candidates at all levels. Um, you can move on to the next slide now. Um, so this is just... Uh, an example of what we send out to our candidates. It's uh, upcoming trade opportunities, upcoming apprenticeship opportunities. So we do send this out to all of our candidates through our Hire 360 network. Uh, with our direct relations to, relationships to these schools, they give us up-to-date information and then we share it directly with our candidates. You can also look for this information on Facebook and have the most real-time up-to-date information. Uh, one thing on this page that I do wanna focus on is that last um, trade opportunity, the line maintainers, IBEW Local 9, which is one of the electricians that will be working on the RPM project. So if you are able to get into that trade, uh, you may find yourself working on this specific RPM project. So that's how we work. We help you get on into the trades and then hopefully put you on to projects like this as well. Uh, you can move on to the next. Um, so in addition to that, uh, electricians, local nine, the line maintainers, there are some requirements that you may need to meet. You may need to get a CDLA to get into that trade. So that's why we also have created partnerships with outside organizations like Central States there, Chicago Women's Trades, and ASEA to help us uh, meet those needs for our candidates. You know, we can't do it all by ourselves. And that's why we did create these partnerships because we can benefit from from them with our candidates. They're able to go into these organizations and get the, the necessary help they need uh, to reach out and to make sure they're meeting the needs of all the candidates. Uh, so I do appreciate everybody being here. This, you know, this is what I have about Hire360. We do look forward to being able to get to know you better. Um, I will be posting Uh oh, you you went mute there, Damien. I'll go know. ahead and jump in from uh, Damien posted the link uh, for anyone that's interested. Please go ahead and fill out our assessment form. It will connect you to to next steps and getting started with us again at no cost. Um, whether you're just getting started or you're an existing cardholder looking to get back to work, 
that's what we're here to help. So um, I know Kate mentioned they'll send this deck around, but for anyone interested right now, feel free to fill out the assessment form at the link provided in the chat and we'll get connected to you soon. We look forward to working with all of you. And we'll pass it on to Jasmine Williams to kick it off about their great opportunities. Thank you, Damian and Karen. Hello, everybody. I'm Jasmine Williams, and I'm here with the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. We oversee the public workforce system in Chicago and suburban Cook County. You may have heard of the American Job Centers in your community. We are responsible for those. We have 10 in and around Cook County, but we have over 72 locations that provide services to over 140,000 people and 1,000 businesses per year. Many of our centers are located in communities um, with high rates of poverty or where there may be individuals who have historically been upper, underrepresented in the construction trades. Next slide, please. A little bit about our system. We have American Job Centers, which I mentioned before, which are comprehensive, but we also have a number of different types of centers, such as sector-based centers. So we are we are um, just about to open a new sector center for transportation distribution logistics, and it will also serve as a second headquarter for our construction sector. We also have a number of career pathway pro training programs, as well as a number of programs that are targeted at youth and special populations. So um, no matter what you need, we probably have a program that would fit for you. Next slide, please. Some of the services that we offer in those centers um, is everything from training and interview prep. So you may be looking for a new career. You may want to learn what is out there, um, or you may be a business that is looking for talent. Either way, we are able to assist you. So we have a business relations and economic development team that um, provides a number of tools. Say you wanna hire someone who is in need of training. We have a number of customized training, um, customized training tools that we can develop and deliver for you. Or if you are an individual who is seeking training, um, while you wait for those apprenticeships to open up, you may want to get a CDL. You may want to um, get some sort of pre-apprenticeship training that can make you more marketable and more able to get into the union. We have funding to pay for those trainings for individuals who qualify. We also have, like I mentioned, sector centers in information technology, most recently transportation, but we also have sector centers in hospitality and healthcare. So we oversee um, a, a number of public resources to help put people to work. And the ultimate goal of everything that we do, whether it's training for individuals or employers, is ultimately employment placement. We're very excited to be a part of this project and to be able to source um, and assist with the training and connecting candidates to this great opportunity. Next slide, please. So specifically, I mentioned a broad array of training and programs that we that we have and that are available to you. But we're here today to talk about construction. When you come into our workforce centers, we're able to assist with pre-apprenticeship pre-apprenticeship testing. So before you get into that union, there is a test that you need to take and there is preparation that goes along with that. So we're able to do that. We're able to interview with you and make sure that you are ready to interview, that you're polished. We have a number of um, funds for supportive services. So say you need a new suit or even when you do get that job, you need some steel toe boots. Um, anything that it has been a barrier for you with employment, we have funding to assist with providing those services. Everything from transportation to equipment, tools, uniform. Um, and we know those things can become very expensive in the construction space. We are able to pay for some of those things um, for non-union and union members. For those union members who may have back union dues that need to be paid, who maybe are not in good standing, 
we also have funds for that. Our premier construction initiatives right now are the CTA RPM project. And we also have another project um, called Construction Works where we're able to place some non-union individuals. There on the slide, you see my contact information. I am the acting manager of construction initiatives, but we are really excited to welcome a gentleman named Robert Kelly, who is in the audience today. Um, very soon, you'll be able to meet him. And he brings a wealth of experience from the construction industry. And we will just be working together along with our business service representative to provide you the best experience um, the best experience possible. Um, there you see how you can get connected. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the chat. But if you are a job seeker who is interested in training, who's interested in connect, getting connected to the CTA project and, and figuring out what, what workforce options are available to you, you can apply right there at that link, tinyurl.com, CTA at CCWP. Uh, and that's all, I'll turn it back over to Jamie. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine, and all of the workforce partners. Uh, now we will go ahead and grab the rest of the questions, both uh, workforce related as well as any remaining DBE questions. Uh, Chanel, if you wanna tackle those. Hey, so we have some unions show that they are not accepting applications. Is that true? So um, I can jump in here briefly, but um, yes and no. So different applications are open at different times. So a part of what we do is try to help folks understand what's open and when, make sure you're prepared for those when um, applications are open. And then, um, uh, you know, make sure to keep me moving. If sometimes you need the CDL license, sometimes you need um, it's tools to get you started. So it's a matter of connecting to resources. Um, particularly with COVID, some apprenticeship schools have been closed. Um, there's a lot of movement to reopen schools in the new year, so there'll be new opportunities, but it really is gonna depend on which trade you're talking about or where what you're interested in joining. Uh, Damien or Pat? Yeah, and, uh, thanks Ashley. Just to, this is yeah. Karen, just to add on that, I know Kate said that she'll be sending around this deck. One of the slides includes what the newest openings will be in the coming new year. And if anyone wants a quick reference, you can look at Higher 360's Facebook page as we updated that recently to include those. Um, so like Ashley said, uh, different trades are open at different times, but that's what we're here to help you navigate so that you're not overwhelmed in that process. Thank you. Thank you. And that was it for the chat and the Q&A. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chanel. Any last questions um, while you guys type, if there are any more? I do want to um, highlight some of the things that I took away, and hopefully you all have some great takeaways too. I heard quite a few times that this is the largest project, capital development project in CTA's history. I think that that's important. I think what you should also hear with that mean what that means is there's a lot more opportunity right for us to create both in the workforce as well as the business space i heard that leah um has and walsh floor has been very diligent in breaking down scopes of, of projects so that they can create additional opportunities for our small businesses that's huge um, i heard damien with hyatt 360 uh, mention a lot of their programming comes at no cost which is essential right particularly during this time I heard Jasmine also with the partnership, they have funding to help support you all in navigating with the necessary tools and resources uh, to gain workforce and employment. And what I also heard from everyone is build the relationships now, right? They gave you Q1 to Q4 all the way out to the end of 2021. Don't wait until 20, Q4 2021 to call them. All the contact information was included in today's presentation. CTA diversity programs encourage you to contact us as necessary. Um, and before I let you all go, I'll do a final check. Chanel, any last questions? Yes, we had uh, two more. Well, one was a question. One is more like a uh, statement. Um, are you using outsourcing services to train contact tracers? Is there a process to be considered for this opportunity as a company? That's a, that's a really great question. Um, that's something that I think if you reach out to 
uh, the diversity staff for Walsh floor, we can put you in contact with um, our safety team. And, you know, just even beyond the RPM project, as many of you know, uh, Walsh Construction is, is a local federal contractor here as well. So it'd be interesting to maybe make those connections and, and see if that's a possibility. Okay, thank you. Then we um, thank you. I could jump in real quick. This is Corey with Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. Uh, Malcolm X College uh, does contact tracing work, and uh, the partnership is responsible for uh, the city's community-based uh, contact tracing course. So we're in the process of hiring and training 600 contact tracers. And if you're interested in learning about those opportunities specifically, check out shytracing.com. And then if, if Walsh Floor is doing internal contact tracing or the CTA is doing internal contact tracing, we'd be happy to talk with you about that too. Thank you, Corey. Good information. Um, next we have, with such a demand for union labor to fulfill construction needs, there should be more open opportunities to enter the union. I, I think I mean, we, we wholeheartedly agree. I think that's the beauty of <clears throat> having these projects. Um, I think they serve as a catalyst uh, for us to not only work with you know, CTA's workforce partners, but then also work with the unions about uh, those kind of demands and, and, and kind of try to like collectively collaborate on, you know, solutions that, that make sense for, for all parties involved from increasing membership and, and doing so strategically to make sure that we're looking at um, diverse, more and more diverse candidates too. But I think that the jobs drive the, the need for this discussion, which is an ongoing theme that's not dedicated only to this project, but to the fact that there's gonna be so many opportunities um, over the next decade across Chicago. Thank you. And then we have, what are typical payment terms? That depends. That depends on uh, negotiating the contract. Um, they, um, you know, we, we do things on a, um, contract by contract basis and, and we really assess um, where uh, the contractor is and what can be done um, to um, coexist within the normal pay when pay which is basically our, our contract standard um, but then we're, we're also sensitive to the idea that um, you know uh, con companies are coming uh, different uh, shapes and sizes in terms of just how much they can handle cash flow wise and we really do take a um, specific approach with each vendor about what makes sense and what's feasible. So uh, that's you know net net sixty terms to to making sure that you know they're thinking about ways to maybe even be, build capacity um, in general, and, and that's why we offer um, special initiatives like the uh, building small business program to really look under the hood of, of your company and to really think about. Um, what's sustainable and what makes sense. Okay, thank you. And that's it for questions. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, thank you all for attending today's Red Purple Modernization um, DBE and Workforce Outreach event. There will be a follow-up email with a survey included so that CTA's diversity programs can better respond to your business and workforce needs. Please feel free to uh, complete the survey. I wish you all the best of luck. Happy holidays. Until next time, have a good day.